said. I mean, it's just another uh, Sunday night to a lot of you. It might be, but to Brother Tony, it's a special night. Amen. Uh, and it ought to be to us, too, if he's walking in those shoes. And uh, I looked at Brother Tony before we left to come to the house. And uh, he, I looked down and said, are you nervous? He said, yeah. I am, he said, preaching. I don't get that nervous preaching, but I'm nervous tonight. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but anyway, uh, y'all pray for Brother Tony. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 13. Won't be for you long. Preach a short message here. The Lord give me. And then, and after that, we'll go into the ordination part of the service. <clears throat> First Kings chapter 13, we'll begin reading in verse 1 and read down to verse 6. First Kings 13 and verse 1 it says, Behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon thee. And men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he had cried against the altar of Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat me now, uh, <clears throat> Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, uh, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again and became as it was before. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again for allowing us to be back in your house. It's a blessing and a privilege. We thank you, God, for the songs that's been sung, the prayers that's been prayed, the scripture has been read, this blessed old book that we hold in our hand, that lies were given and taken, that we could have this precious old book. We want to thank you most of all for the precious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for our sins, God. Lord, that blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness, Lord, gives us entrance into heaven, Lord, in the holiest of holies. We want to thank you, God, for what you've done, Lord, where you brought us from and where we're headed. We want to thank you so much for your mercy and grace and we ask God that you would manifest yourself through the reading of God's word as you've done so many times before bless this service Lord and everything done here for the remainder of this service Lord but we know this is ordination service but if there is a lost soul here tonight we ask God we don't want to forget Lord that their, their soul is hanging in a balance and Lord that they'd be saved before it's ever too late we thank you and praise you for Calvary and for all that you do in Jesus name we pray and amen, amen. All right, now I know that a lot of you, especially preachers, you know this story. You've probably heard it a good bit before. Uh, but what we see here is in the previous chapters, you see where jo Jeroboam had uh, tried to build himself up and make himself something that he wasn't. Many know the story how uh, Jeroboam misused his authority and he took his authority and turned to uh, God's people to idol worship. And he'd done many things he was not supposed to do. He tried to tell the people of Israel, it'd be too hard for you to go back up to Jerusalem and worship. Let's just make it more convenient for you to worship here. He said, we'll make some calves of gold. And he did idol worship. And he said, we'll do that. And the people began to worship him. And he made priests of the lowest of the people who were not of the tribe of Levi. They were not of the sons of Levi. But he made them people, those uh, priests who was not supposed to be priests. Then God chose this man of God to go in and destroy the altar that Jeroboam had built. He told him to destroy these altars that they worshipped on. And God used this preacher and God built this preacher up to the point to where this preacher had respect of everybody in the land at this point in time. After he'd done what he'd done, he had everybody's attention. God had built this man up so much. Now I want to preach on this thought tonight, backing up the build up. Backing up the build up. And the, God had built this man up and made him look. I'm telling you, God had put this man in a place where he couldn't get on his own. And I'm telling you, you know if you're 
yourself. You are what you are by the grace of God. You have what you have by the grace of God. God had gi given this man a ministry and a powerful ministry. And I want you to look at me in verse 5. It says that the altar was also, also rent and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Where was this said? In verse 3. Now if you get the picture, Jeroboam is here worshiping and he's come to these altars to burn incense and to do his own type of worship that God had no part in. This man of God comes in that nobody knows and he comes in and he cries against the altar where they're worshiping at and where he's burning incense. And he gave a sign in verse 3 and said that this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. The altar will be rent. That means it's going to be broken down. It's going to be torn apart. He said and the ashes that are upon it will be poured out and that is exactly what happened whenever uh, Jeroboam tried to worship there and burn incense. First of all I want you to look. This was the proof of his calling. It was proof that God had sent this man in here to do this and to preach this message. He had proof upon his ministry. Surely when he came to this place and nobody knew who he was, there's no doubt many people probably questioned, is this man really sent by God? Should we really believe what he's saying? Should we really believe his message? Should we really listen to what he's got to say? But when that altar was rent on its own and the ashes poured out, they said, hold up a minute. That's exactly what he said would happen. A false prophet back then, if he said something and it didn't happen, like he said it would they, they took his life you know they couldn't touch this man because God had proof upon his, his ministry here when what he said would come to pass they all seen it with their own very eyes they could not deny the fact that God was upon this man and he had proof of his ministry we see the proof of his calling and the proof of his ministry but also in verse 4 let's look at the protection of his ministry in verse 4 it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God which he cried against the altar in Bethel that he put forth his hand from the altar saying lay hold on him see Jeroboam didn't like this that this man came in to interrupt his idol worship he didn't like the fact that Jeroboam was doing his own thing and then here comes this man of God comes in and he puts a little wrinkle in it and he says this is where it's going to be God done sent me here to do this and that's exactly what's happening Jeroboam didn't like it and he stretched forth his hand and just pointed at the man and said lay hold on him and about that time God withered his hand back up to him and drew it to him and he couldn't even point at the man any longer. I'm telling you, God's protection was upon this man's ministry. Thank God for his protection. When the devil tried to get to Job, uh, God asked him, said, have you considered my servant Job? He said, how can I? You done built a hedge about him. Hey, that tells me the devil done tried to get to Job before, but he found out there was a great hedge and he couldn't get there. Ain't you glad for God's protection upon the ministry of God? The, I'm telling you, this, and the same God that called this man was the same one that was protecting him. Amen. He had the protection of God upon his ministry. When Jeroboam stretched forth his hand, he couldn't even point his hand at this man like he wanted to and tell him to lay hold on him and let's do something with him. We, seen, uh, we see there the uh, proof of his calling. We see the protection of his calling. And last of all, I want to see the power of his calling. The power of his ministry. Don't you notice in verse 6, the king answered and said to the man of God, entreat me now the, uh, uh, the face of the Lord. You know what he's saying? Pray for me. Pray for me. I can't get a hold of God where I am, but I'm sure you, after seeing what just took place in my life, what seeing what you just preached and what just come to pass, I'm sure you can get a hold of God for me. And my hand's withered, man. I don't know if I can use it. He said, would you entreat the Lord and pray for me? The same one he pointed at and him done away with. Now he wants him to intercede for him and talk to God. We see here, not only did the, uh, this man of God have proof upon his ministry, the protection of God upon his ministry, but now he had the power of God upon his ministry. The way that God was using this man, he had power. He prayed for this man and his hand came back to normal. Ain't that something? We saw that. We say, man, there's no doubt. That's proof that man, God is on this man and there's God's protecting this man. I can't even stretch forth my hand to touch him. I can't do anything with him. And now I'm in need and I got to ask the same one I didn't like five seconds to go to pray for me and help me because I can't help myself. God put power upon this man's ministry. Just like that, this man, his, his ministry went from way down here to way up here. Why? Because God was upon his ministry. This could have been a great revival. There was no limit to what could happen in this man's life and what God could do with this man's life. There was no limit to it. It could have been one of the greatest revivals of all time when he came in here and destroyed the altars, the false altars, the idol worship, had done away with all that thing, obeyed God, and I wish I could tell you that's the way the story ends. But it's not. 
I'm preaching on backing up the build up. Because <laughs> see, God had done built this man up to be something that he never has been before. Right. And that's not the way the story ended. For sake of time, I just want to take you a walk through the rest of the chapter. This man, after all this happens and he prays for Jeroboam and his hands restored, the whole city's just like, I mean, they've got attention on this man. You say, how you know? You've seen just a minute. He, 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 goes and he goes to walk away and Jeroboam says, hey, won't you come home with me? Won't you come home with me? I'm going to feed you, give you some water to drink and give you a reward for what you've just done for me. He said, you could offer me your whole house and I wouldn't go home with you. He said, why not? He said, because God told me before I came here not to eat any bread here, not drink no water here, and not to go home with anybody. You know, the very things that God told him not to do is what the enemy offered him. Yeah. The very same thing that God, uh, the enemy does to us. The very things that God says, that's what you don't yeah. need is the thing that the enemy yes, is going to offer yeah. you. Right. He said, I can't do it, man. He said, let me tell you something. God told me not even go back home the way I came. I'm going home a different way. Yeah. And he went home a different way. I'm telling you what, God done built this man up and he was doing great. But see, there was a lot of people that day at that worship service that saw what took place. And they said, two sons go home and there's this old prophet sitting at home. And he's sitting there and he hears about the service and the two young men go in and say, Daddy, you wouldn't believe what happened. No doubt when they told him what all happened, it probably was a flashback in his mind when he was in the will of God and God was using him too. Because he was an old prophet, the Bible said. He said, which way did that young man go? And they told him which way he went. He sat on ass and he went and found the man. Yeah. He said, are you the man of God out of Judah that just done all these miracles, done this great work over there and, and, and to King Jeroboam? He said, yes, I am. He said, won't you come home with me? <laughs> I want to feed you and give you something to drink. Come on. He said, God told me not to eat, not to drink here, not to go home with you. He said, I'm not going to do it. And this is what the man said. But an angel spoke to me and told me it'd be all right for you to do that anyway. <laughs> be careful for those people who say an angel spoke to me and it's always contrary to what God's Word already says. It was contrary to what God already affirmed in this man's heart and he already knew what he was supposed to be doing and this old prophet comes along and says, that an angel spoke to me and gave me a different vision than what he gave you. Listen, if what God gave you worked over there with Jeroboam around the altar, it'll work from here to the rest of your ministry. You don't have to change it. Listen, you don't have to listen to somebody else. This man had it all going as long as he obeyed God. But you know what happened? He listened to that man. He went home with that man. He ate with that man. He drank with that man. And then God spoke to that old prophet probably for the first time in many years and said, he's going to die before he gets out of your sight good. And he had to tell him and the man got up and left and the Bible said a lion killed him on the, right out the door on the way. Died on the way. He had so much going for him. I mean, God had used this man already and built him up, but he listened to a lie. He disobeyed God after he already knew what God had told him to do. He lost his ministry and he lost his life. Brother Tony, I am encourage you tonight, don't let what somebody else says or what somebody else does do change what you already know God said. What God's already put upon you. Don't let nobody else change what you already know God has said in this book. Don't let them change. I'm telling you, this man lost his ministry, lost his life, all because he listened to a lie and listened to false information from a false prophet that was no longer really worshiping. He was sitting at home and had to get information from everybody else because he never would darken the doors again. And God used this man of God in a mighty way and then he lost his ministry all because he listened to a lie. Don't listen to a lie, Brother Tony. I encourage you tonight. Keep doing what you're doing. God's called you and you're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I'm telling you, God's able to lift you up and help you and, do, and use you in the ministry and, and do the impossible. I'm telling you, God called this man that we read about but he failed to follow God's instructions throughout his whole ministry. Let me remind you, it ain't how we start, it's how we finish. Amen. Ain't how we start, it's how we finish. Brother Tony, God's called you into the ministry and you need to make it count. Amen. Amen. You, you, we don't get a whole bunch of chances at this. I'm going to be honest with you. 
You know, yeah, you need to make it count while you can. Because I'm telling you, Brother Tony, your, your ministry, uh, it, it, your, your testimony needs to stay clean. The Apostle Paul said, I bring my body under subjection that I myself should not be a castaway when I stand to preach. That means disapprove before I ever get up. And I'm telling you, 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 you stick with the Lord. You keep your faith in the Lord. Don't turn away from Him. Don't walk away from Him. Don't listen to something somebody else tells you. You pray and listen to the Lord. And I'm here to encourage you tonight and pray for you that you will start Start well and you will also finish well and you'll back up the build up because God's already put you in a place that you couldn't get on your own. Now it's up to you to back up the build up. That means keep your faith in the Lord and keep doing what God's called you to do. When David first came out and David came out and he heard about this Philistine giant, he heard about Goliath, he come out and he questioned everybody. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this man that's defying the armies of God? Who is this man that y'all letting do this for 40 days? Who, who's sitting here cursing your God and all this. Who is this man? And nobody gave David a chance. Saul looked at him and just shook his head, I'm sure. Saul just didn't give the boy a chance, said, now come on, you sure you want to do this? He said, let me give you all this armor. He said, I don't need that. It ain't been put to the test. He said, but I serve a God that's been put to the test. I know that God's on my side. I'm telling you what, David built up God. He made God look like a God that could not fail. He made God look like he could do the impossible. You know why? Because God could. And David David believed it. God, uh, David built up God. And when it came time to fight the giant, David put his faith in the Lord and walked out and he backed up the build up. He said, listen to me. You come to me with a sword and a shield. You'll outweigh me by a mile. He said, I know you got a weaver's beam. You got all this stuff. But I'm telling you what. I come in the name of the Lord and I'm here to believe the Lord and I'm here to defeat you. You know what he was doing? He was backing up the build up. Amen. And we are here tonight to encourage you, Brother Tony, to back up the build up. We brag on God. We talk about God. We, we, we just lift him up and say how good he is. And if we're going to do that, let's put some feet on our faith. Let's put some feet on our faith. God can do the impossible, but we got to back up the build up. Brother Tony, I want to encourage you tonight. Don't get weary in well doing. In due season, you will reap if you faint not. Help can't help tomorrow if you give up today. Mm. Don't get weary and well doing. The Bible says be instant in season and out of season. If there's one thing I can say as a preacher and been pastoring for 10 years, this is the hardest thing, one of the hardest things to do is to be instant out of when it's out of season. It's easy to get up and preach when things are going well. It's easy to get up and preach when everything in the house is going well. It's good to get up and preach when you feel well. But whenever it's out of season and things ain't going so well, you still got to get up and be believe in the same God, preach the same message, and we have the same faith because God does not change. Our situations change. Our circumstances change. But God never changes. He's the the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God that called you. He's the same God that will sustain you and help you in this ministry, brother. And we're here tonight to encourage you to back up the build up. God is able to perform that which He has started. He will start that which He has begun. A good work in you, brother. Amen. Backing up the build up. This man of God had it all ruined. His whole ministry and everything because he listened to a lie. And he went on a different road than what God had set for him. And that's how quick. 20 years of ministry, one day of ministry, or 30 years of ministry, or 40 years of ministry can be destroyed in one day. That's how serious it is. I say this before we get into the ordination part. Me and other people, we've talked about this many times. But you can see preachers that's preached and pastored faithfully for five years, ten years, fifteen years, and twenty years. And people are just loving them on them, loving on them and praying for them. They think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. And, and as Paul said one time, he said, uh, what happened to you if I become your enemy because I told you the truth? He said at one time you would have plucked out your eyes and gave them to me. Now you're ready to kill me. But many people have done that. Preachers and pastors have done that. And all because of one failure, one fall. One shortcoming, one mistake, one sin. Sometimes those one things, people remember more than they remember the 20 years of faithfulness and the 20 years of preaching and the 20 years of studying 
and being faithful to the calling of God. That's how important it is. Now, we're not justified by them. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, if you want to keep a testimony clean and you want people on your side, listen, live a clean testimony, live the godly life and back up the build up. Amen. Because we couldn't preach on our own. We couldn't do this on our own. We couldn't put ourselves in the ministry. But if God's going to build us up and put us there, we ought to back up what God's built up. Amen. By faith in Jesus Christ and living for the Lord. All right, this time we're going to turn to Titus. The book of Titus. <clears throat> Brother Tony, we just want to encourage you tonight. Pray that the Lord increase your faith. That you don't make the same mistakes that this young man did here in the story. Although we call it a story, it's the truth. Looking at the scriptures tonight in Titus 1, we'll begin reading in verse 5. Begin reading in verse 5 and read down to verse 9. <clears throat> Titus 1 and verse 5 says, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I have appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, that's money for the wrong reasons, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, and temperate. Now a lot of people put in a lot of emphasis on those what I just read, but this verse 9 to me is one of the most important ones. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort, that means exhort the church, and to convince the gainsayers. Amen. Amen. As we go into this ordination service, I just want to kind of pray over this, the scriptures, and before I give charge to Brother Tony, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we want to thank you for your mercy and grace and thank you, God, for the calling that you've put upon Brother Tony's life. God, for we know how serious this is. God, we know how much big of an important decision it is in his life, God, that he, he's made here to follow you and to, to walk by faith and put his faith and trust in you and to lean on you. We ask God tonight that you would encourage him, increase his faith, and we pray, God, that we somehow, some way would be an encouragement to him and help to him. God, most of all, we pray for him that he'll always put his trust in you, not lean to his own understanding, and acknowledge you in all ways that you may direct his paths. We thank you and praise you for all that you do and all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. amen. We're assembled here tonight for the ordination of Brother Tony Ramey. After Brother Tony came here some years ago, then he became a member here. He been in fellowship with people of like precious faith for quite some time. Uh, recently the church set him aside under the watch care of the church. And we of God's Healing Springs Baptist Church and the participating presbytery here, we find no reason during that time of watch care that we should not ordain Brother Tony Ramey. Uh, most of you know he's been to Bible college. That don't mean he had to be. He's had to be called by God. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, How shall they preach except they be sent? There ain't nothing wrong with Bible college, but he's been to Bible college. He's proven himself to be faithful. Uh, he's preached here many times and other places he's preached. Although Brother Tony is not uh, in place right now to be a pastor, he's not petitioning a church for a pastor, uh, but his calling in the ministry by God and his keeping of these requirements here will prepare him for that day if it soon come. Amen. 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 Uh, but today we are ordaining him as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we're ordaining him for, which would carry many of the same requirements and many of the same principles of what we just read. Uh, because if, as a brother Tony, as I've already said, if you don't keep a clean testimony, you will not be able to exe exhort the church. The church, won't have, the church will not have confidence in you. If you do not keep a clean testimony and you do not live what you preach, then you will not be able to convince the gainsayers. You will not be able to convince those who are lost that they need to be saved. With that being said tonight, Brother Tony, we charge you this day to walk worthily of the vocation to which you are called by God. Seeking always to bring honor to the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. To diligently and faithfully perform the duties of the ministry of the gospel. We charge you to do these things keeping in mind the words of the Apostle Paul who said, forgetting those things which are behind. 
forgetting those things which are behind, not dwelling on them, and reaching forth unto the things, those things which are before you, and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ, striving to be the biblical example that you ought to be for the church and for your fellow man. Brother Tony, at this time, do you accept these charges and responsibility of the calling upon your life into the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Yes. Amen. If you would, Brother Tony, let's come forward right here. Right here. <coughs> Sit right here. At this time, we want to ask the Presbyterian ordained men to come forward at this time.